This is the legacy of Hillary Clinton. Death, destruction, terrorism, and weakness. But Hillary Clinton's legacy does not have to be America's legacy. Americanism, not globalism, will be our credo as long as we are led by politicians who will not put America first, then we can be assured that other nations will not treat America with respect, the respect that we deserve. Just one of the attacks there by Donald Trump against Hillary Clinton. Welcome back to CBSN. You're watching After the Gavel here. And I am joined, as always, by my political panel. Uh, we just heard, Nancy, uh, that the, the attacks from uh, Donald Trump to Hillary Clinton, that was a, a theme throughout this speech. But the Hillary Clinton campaign was hitting back through the duration of it. What, what is it that you've right. found? You an email from them practically once a minute, uh, <laughs> pushing back at, at, at some of the cases that he was making, uh, particularly on, on the notion that crime is way up uh, in the United States. You know, he, the first part of his speech was all about crime and all about how unsafe uh, America is, and, and, and everyone knows it, and we're, we're in a crisis. It was like, you know, Sheriff Trump is, is coming mm -hmm. in to, to save you and, and make you safe. And the Clinton campaign pushed back almost immediately and said, crime is not on the decline. Yes, there are some cities where uh, there has been a, um, a, a bounce in homicides in this year. But by and large, violent crime is on the decline. Uh, they pushed back aggressively at, well, as well at some of the things that he said about her. Uh, you talked about the fact that he said uh, in his speech that her slogan is, uh, I'm with her, mm -hmm. and his slogan is, I'm with, with you. you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she responded on Twitter, I'm with you, asterisk, not included, women, African Americans, LGBT people, Muslims, Latinos, immigrants, etc. Mm -hmm. Arguing that some of his rhetoric tonight, which was very inclusive, uh, is not representative of the things that he has said over time on the campaign trail and also not representative of his policies. Uh, we also got a statement from John Podesta. He's the campaign chairman for the Clinton campaign. Tonight, Donald Trump painted a dark picture of an America in decline. And his answer, more fear, more division, more anger, more hate, was yet another reminder that he is temperamentally unfit and totally unqualified to be president of the United States. Hmm. Uh, so hearing that, Leslie, well, what are your thoughts? You know, well, I mean, you know, the notion that the, the speech was, uh, in, in, in the first part of it especially, uh, very much about uh, uh, restoring law and order, uh, the notion that things were almost out of control in the country and that there was something that needed to be done in a very urgent way, uh, otherwise things could get worse. Uh, there was this sense of fear in the first part. Sure, and I think it's consistent with many of the messages like we talk about that are on the stump when he is out there speaking. Two key points here. One, perception is reality. The Clinton campaign can argue all of they want. No, really, the city is here, there, or the numbers statistically are a little smaller. That is not how people feel. Fundamentally, they feel that their law enforcement, uh, just the last few weeks, that mm -hmm. there is a battle on the streets mm -hmm. of America. And I don't care how many times you say it, it's they see these images every day, and there is this heightened sense of, of destabilized security, both for uh, Black Lives Matter or Blue Lives Matter or All Lives Matter. That is very consistent and very palatable. But the second part is there's always this disconnect between what we see and feel in the auditorium, and we can get very excited, and what viewers watch on their mobile devices on CBSN. You know, Especially the mobile devices. Especially okay. in high def. Huh? Yeah. In high def. But um, like we are saying, uh, but there is always this very different, they're like, oh, it was very measured. It reminds me of Mitch McConnell who said, just read the stuff speech, make right. it very boring. Just read it. And this tranquility and this like tranquilizing effect that Major talks about. It's going to be the new button on the white noise radio machine. Like, you know, thank you. You can listen to Trump's speech. He'll be very happy. We'll deliver that at Christmas. But I think overall... Cannot wait. <laughs> this is going to be so... I'm not going to be able to sleep that night. <laughs> Christmas Eve. No way. No, but what is the point? <laughs> 
for some, he is not as exuberant and not, you know, the, the octave is not as high because he is reading that and he's mm -hmm. doing his job. And I think it's going to be perceived differently among people watching it, tuning in for the first time, because he doesn't have to win this audience. He has to win everybody else. Leslie brings up an important point. And it's this, that when Trump says, I'm talking about something and laying the facts out about either crime or what we've seen in the last month with American law enforcement, that's a real issue. I'm in no way suggesting it's not a real issue it, or it was in any way an error for him to raise it. But one of the things that are that is you're called upon as a leader with your rhetoric is to explain a problem and carry your audience to a potential solution. And that's what I found in many respects missing from the, the, the rhetorical approach the Trump campaign brought to that particular issue of law, law enforcement. Because you can say community-oriented policing has either been a complete success or a near success, or we can adapt our tactics, or we can do other things. We can talk to each other. We can build community methods of conversation to take people from a place where they are legitimately afraid to a place where they might feel more comfortable and that actually has some resonance with the people who are on the front lines. Talk about, because I know Trump has had conversations with sheriffs and police chiefs and has more than a mild curiosity in this issue. Talk about what you learned. Talk about what you would suggest. Talk about what you see that you think everyone else is missing because you're telling the facts as you believe they're not being told and then explain the solution that you uniquely bring to the problem. That is what I think effective political leaders do, and it's someone who leads a major party into a presidential campaign, I would argue, must do. Hmm. Do you think, Leslie, that any minds were changed uh, based on his performance tonight? Individuals that, that we talk consistently about individuals who already kind of calcified their view of him. We're not going to move that here. They maybe would have liked a little bit more kind of fun, chutzpah, and this whole thing, but that's fine. They're, they're going to be they're going to be there anyway. This is about getting people excited and feeling more secure about the ticket, at least the party folks who are watching as they move forward. So it's putting some content out there, so to speak, that is really measured, that is that has some great sound bites for tomorrow. And again, the Democrats can get in the weeds about some of these little nuanced details. They have every right to push back, but I think it may be more effective what, because it is going to be an introduction to some people who just don't quite know what he is yet. The reality is that the number of people at this point who are undecided between these two candidates who could not be more different is vanishingly small. It's about 20 suburban women <laughs> outside of Cleveland and strategists We're on both sides. We're going to be partying with yes. them later, just so you know. The strategists so, on both so, sides know exactly uh, who they are. We're going to need a lot of Chardonnay <laughs> That's right. and like a crap ton of brie because so, we're all heading there and I haven't eaten since 9 so, this morning. So let's get ready. Okay? CBS News Chief White House correspondent, everyone. It's, yes. on, it's on him. Somebody it's on send him some Big crackers. Uber van is going to show up, ladies. You better be ready. All right, All right, get ready for Major Garrett. Uh, I know, here okay. we go. Uh, the, to, uh, hashtag after, party uh, after party, after okay. party. Um, so the, the, the real question is not, uh, does it convince undecideds? The real question is, does it motivate lukewarm Republicans? Mm -hmm. Because what this is really going to come down to is who's better at turning out uh, the lukewarm supporters in their base? Is it the Clinton campaign? Um, that's better able to turn out sort of disaffected Sanders supporters, um, you know, Democrats who aren't sold on her, or is it the Trump campaign, you know, able to get Republicans who supported one of 15 other candidates uh, and who have misgivings about Trump to the polls? And so, you know, the, the question that I think pollsters will be asking over the next few days um, of Republicans uh, is, you know, how do you feel about Trump now versus how you felt about him before? Do you feel more strongly about him now than you did before? And that'll give us some clues. Hmm. Uh, in addition to that moment earlier uh, that we talked about where Trump was basically thanking the evangelical community for its support and then giving a little bit of a glimpse of humility when he said, you know, probably don't deserve it. Um, were there any other surprising moments? Anything that sort of stood out? No, you're shaking your head, Major. No. No. no I, I, and 
there would be times when he would sort of say, believe me, believe right. me, and sort of repeat something mm -hmm. that was in the speech for emphasis, because I think he was trying to catch his breath and mm -hmm. just sort of catch the, the moment. And one of the things that, I, I guess one thing that I found surprising, and I don't know if anyone else picked up on this, but it's, it's, it appeared to me at moments, he had to sort of like walk away from the podium to kind of like steady himself. Yeah. Either steady himself, yeah. or I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm yes. getting a little tired of this. Yeah. I'm, I kind of been up here a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I felt like you know, can someone give me a hoagie or something? Is there a is there a PBR around? God Almighty! At least give me something from my fitting face. <laughs> I think he was up there a long time ago because yeah. I've watched Trump give a lot of these yeah, long speeches. because he doesn't speeches. do that usually, no, does he? He, he, there, he yeah. has a great facility for talking a long time. Right. But again, in his this sort of call and response thing where he's in with the crowd and yeah. they're laughing and he's making right. a joke. And he'll start a topic and then there'll be seven other topics and then he'll get back to the original yeah. topic. Yeah. And then he'll jump over two topics yeah. and swing back around. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like watching a demolition derby rhetorically <laughs> okay. to go to a Trump rally. <laughs> Um, and there was just none of it. It, it. it was a set speech tonight, mm -hmm. a set piece speech. And he's still working on that, developing his skills. But that, that time to sort of back away from the podium and kind of... <laughs> Right. Oh man! But he no longer looks is, like he no longer looks like he's in a hostage video when he has to no, deliver a speech that's good. on a teleprompter. In the beginning, no, we you all, could yeah. tell that he was being forced the to. Twitters do it. are gonna love you for but, that. They're gonna love yeah, you for that. True. I said he no longer looks like that. He does. But he you does. have he it's no after the gavel, does. Much more free. He is, Twitter's, he's fantastic <laughs> with the teleprompter. Hashtag no longer is, hostage video. He is big league with right. the teleprompter. Right. It's huge. All right. But, well, cloud but you could horrible. tell, exactly. obviously, it was not his preferred mode of no, communication. No. Right. And he resented having to do it at first. Yes. And, and it was stiff, Certainly and it was uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah. You know, he has developed a facility with mm -hmm. it now where he can insert, you know, his own personality when he wants to while also giving him, uh, while also delivering the kind of prepared speech that Mitch McConnell and so many other Republican leaders were hoping like, for. He had guardrails. <laughs> I mean, he's out there in a little bumper boat, and he's got some guardrails, and he had to stay, and that's what he's talking about. Within the rails, he put yeah. a little emphasis, he'd get right. excited. Right. That's yeah. what I love about these Trump, you know, pro, uh, teleprompter speeches, is he sees the line he likes, and he gets really excited. Right. He's yeah. like, oh, yeah, we're really going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. I'm so glad. Good. It's your speech. Now, there's a dark beat on the platter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 All right.